uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom. Well, hello there, humans of these other things, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it to. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bushkin. Today's video is about this tank here, the VZ55, and it's the first video of 2024. I wanted to get off on the right foot with a tank that I think deserves a little bit of a chat. This is a tank that I ground the line more for something to do, if I'm honest with you, than any other reason. I had a lot of free XP, I had a lot of credits, and I was just like, you know what, I need to grind a line. And if you're a CC or a community contributor, you have press accounts. So there is a little bit of a disincentive to just play your own account. But I play my own account for the main part. And I'd played this tank on the press account before it came out, and I quite enjoyed it. So I never went back to it. And I realized, oh, by the way, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment just below. Uh, yeah, you know, spruiking, talking stuff. Uh, and I wanted to give this tank a little bit of the spotlight because it's a tank that I feel like it doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, didn't feature in the recent um, season finale that I went to cast in Min in Vilnius, not Minsk, used to cast in Minsk, now casting in Vilnius. Uh, and it's not really built for the esports arena, but it is very much built for public consumption in these standard random battles. And what I found was over the course of three battles, one after the other, that this thing is an absolute beast. It's got the combat stabilization effect you can see there. Um, if you go under 15 kilometers an hour, that reticle stays extraordinarily small. And you've already seen two examples of it, two shots, one on the heavy there, and the other was on the uh, E50, I think it was, that poked across the top. Now, that doesn't mean that you're gonna always hit shots because it is a tier 10 heavy. That means it's got a tier 10 heavy gun. It's not exactly accurate, but it's not gonna be because your aim circle is to blame if you run it correctly. Now, I haven't been making huge amounts of content over the last month or two of the year. And the reason for that is I had a lot of, a lot of gigs on my other channel, which we don't always talk about, the PUBG mobile channel. And I don't have anything on at the moment. The start of the year is a great time for me. I got to basically just be on limited duties for two weeks here, and I've only just returned. And the first video I'm making of 2024 is not a PUBG mobile video. It is, in fact, a tanks video because I've actually played a little bit of tanks while I've been enjoying the sunny weather here in Sydney. Back to this tank. Um, what it has that is a big problem is a huge lower glacis. Oh, hello. How you going, Batchat? Good to see you. Um, that was a brave move. He obviously wanted the kill on that one. Took a little hit. Didn't take too much. Thought he could have taken a little more if that thing had to come around the corner. And he did. <laughs> I mean, he wanted to get that kill. Good on him. Was necessary. Uh, that's fake money there. You should know that is not a, uh, a clear pen just there that is not the clear pen that you wish it was the lower glacis on this thing is enormous um you've got a 0 0.349 dispersion gun that doesn't hold it back what holds it back is that if you brawl in open you have a 140 millimeter lower plate but the size of the lower plate is genuinely disconcerting it is a major impediment to open field brawling so you've got to be very much aware of that every time you step into the arena with the VZ-55. If you can minimize the lower plate, then you can really do well. And one of the things that we struggle to minimize lower plates with is tanks without gun depression. Now this is a mid-range gun depression tank. Seven degrees of gun depression is not huge amounts. And you're gonna see what I try to do in a lot of the fights I have with this tank is put it in positions where it doesn't have to be a huge gun depression winner. If you can gamble on getting to positions where it's flat and you can just let your turret soak up the punishment, you'll be far better off. That was game number one. That was on Canyon. And then we stepped up to Himmelsdorf. Now, Himmelsdorf, and that was like surprised, like 5K, that's a second place, second second class. Wow, that's, um, that's not that great. Let's go and see what it can do in the next game. 
We ride up to Himmelsdorf, and this is exactly, you can see I've blown the speed boost, because I want to get here. I want to get to this slot right here and start abusing. Okay, sure. That, that shot happened. Um, bouncing a Fosh at that range. Okay, whatever. R and Jesus, take the wheel. Now you can see you have a flat, very flat chassis. It's not very tall in uh, any great respect, and you've got an awful lot of armor on top. In fact, you've got spaced armor either side of the gun, 45 millimeters of spaced armor. But to be frank, the turret behind that spaced armor is genuinely terrifying. You've got 210 millimeters sloped just either side of the gun mantlet, and you've got 150 millimeters sloped on the corners and that equates to about 429 millimeters of armor and about 354 but with that spaced armor in front of it it means even big heat firing donkosaurs aren't going to be able to get through there your hatches however are another matter 212 millimeters on the uh, big hatch and 214 millimeters on the little hatch there is a 227 millimeter effective armor uh, bump that you can see just on the left of your screen there, the top of the hatch. But this is where you want to be, basically. You want to be just carving them up in a situation like this, where you're using that... It's not low slung. It's not quite as low as the IS-4, I don't believe. But look at how steep the angle on that upper plate is. That means you can really nudge into the curves on the berm in front of you and make a lot of hay. Your gun as well isn't huge in terms of alpha a lot of these uh like the 60 tp for instance has the massive gun you've got 2600 dpm which is nothing amazing but you do have 259 millimeters of ap pen and 335 millimeters of apcr no heat now i don't actually mind that i i do prefer apcr than heat even though heat can in some instances like on flat surfaces be better i'd like to be able to just fire my premo without worrying about spaced armor and if you're firing premo you don't want to be facing something like the side of an e100 where you have to fire uh ap to pen through that spaced armor so that was 5369 i was like happy days first class okay we're climbing and then we moved on to alpenstadt now alpenstadt was always going to be an interesting one for me because i play predominantly medium tanks and this thing is definitely not a medium tank your mobility isn't horrific again uh for a tier 10 heavy tank but it's it's not really what you want to be doing it's only 38 kilometers an hour but you're really all about finding a space to hide that lower glacis now do you see the red line there that line's very important that's as low as your gun depression will go one of the most common mistakes you will find that players make when they're not completely focused is they'll overexpose. If you look at that line on your screen, and especially if you're a new, newer player, if you look at that line on your screen, that is the line that as long as the visible targets are above that line, that should, all that, that should be all that is showing. Like you absolutely do not want to be having that line way above the horizon. Uh, if that line is above the edge of where you're shooting, then it means that you've got more of your tank exposed to get the gun down than you require. Now, it's not always going to be a problem because quite often you know that there's nothing else that can shoot. You're actually angling up into the corner there uh, of that house, kind of side scraping off it. We're going to hold this flank. And geez, this tank does well. Um... That's, that shot right there, that 586 max roll, is all to do with the stabilization that you can see. Hitting little snapshots like that, little angled shots, are... Oh, see, that's over-angling. Massively over-angling to the side shots from the IS-4. And we bleed there, and that could hurt us. So we're moving back forward, ignoring the IS-4. And we're just going to focus and try and get a little side shot through. Maybe switch to HE if we can just see the tip of his hatch. Oh, it was worth a try unfortunately not pushing forward they are still in the cap and we are well and truly not not owning this area we've blocked three k's worth that was a very very optimistic shot but we no longer have any options we're going to try to just angle away from that is4 and there's our shot 
We're up to 3,650 blocked. We've got three tanks with angles on us here. Look, look at the guys in the spawn. Oh my god, the Yag Tiger's gone down. We are surrounded. That snapshot needs to go in and it does. Happy freaking days. That was a big shot. That allows us to drop back here and start covering the angles from somewhere else. Oh, can we get that? That stabilization is such a game changer. Here's the IS-4 and we're just trying to pull back. Now that might seem a little bit crazy, but the IS-4 doesn't have a lot of gun depression either. And I'd rather risk a shot on the top of my hatch or my upper glacis, flattening that out, than giving the lower glacis, because the lower glacis is just way too weak to bounce, even if I can get a decent angle on it. And he is firing his heat rounds there. So there we go. We're going to nose in. Wonderful stuff. The FV4005 has rolled in and started dumping. And the rest of the team is now rolling in. We are at 4,000 damage, 4,000 blocked. That's a lot of blocked. <laughs> That's a lot of blocked on this flank. There's the other VZ55. Uh, and this tank, look, it's just such a workhorse. It's not flashy. It really isn't. It's not going to get there faster. It's not going to do those 800 rolls that your max roll with a, a big donk is going to do. Your HE isn't incredibly effective. 610 is your HE, and it's only 68 millimeters of pen. Your turret's super strong, but you don't have incredible gun depression. You can still be penned on the hatches, but you're going to hit a lot of those snapshots. You've seen me hitting them. I've hit an awful lot of those snapshots. We're switching to AP, firing underneath the spaced armor there. This is so much closer than I feel like it should be this game. Um, they've dominated above me on the town, and we've had three tanks down here in this area and still not been able to do anything. And although we've saved some hit points here, we do finally blow a shot, uh, firing APCR into the track of the IS-7. And this is where that crappy DPM really starts shining. Um, 5.3K, just angling and dangling. Even when you know you're going to take a shot here, all you're doing is trying to make it difficult so that you minimize the amount of time that they have to fire and you maximize the amount of time that you have to fire. What that means is you're lowering the effective DPM of the red tank, even if it doesn't really make a huge difference. If it makes a one shot's worth of difference over the course of a brawl, that's it, right? That's all you need. And we are actually severely severely low on hit points this team and i set this up i'm just like you know what screw this he doesn't know i'm here he's chasing i can get this and we do that's three kills 5785 damage and 4070 damage blocked and we finally get the mastery on the vz55 great games um great tank and one that i think uh i'll be going back to in the future a real hellraiser and something that can hold a line like an absolute boss. I'm Bushka. Thanks so much for watching. Look after yourself. Stay safe on the battlefield. And uh, happy 2024. And I'll see you through the rest of it.